Whether you're a regular person who loves beautiful and functional spaces or a young interior designer starting out, this video is for you. I'll be sharing with you several interiors and living room mistakes I see a lot of people make and how to avoid them. Hey there, Chica here. I am an interior designer and the creative director of Unicorn Interior. And as usual, I'm here with great tips to help you manage and beautify your space. I don't know if this happens to any other person, but the moment I get into an apartment or any space at all, I take a look around, admire it, and then think about what I could have done better. And in the process of looking around, I see some basic errors and interior design mistakes, and I feel the need to talk about it today. So let's go. Eight living room interior design mistakes. Number one, stop trying to contrast a lot. You need to let your design flow seamlessly. Contrast is an essential part of interior design, but you need to know how to use contrast the right way. A plain single color space can be very boring. That's why contrast is a must. And in doing that, you need to make sure that the colors don't stick out. I've seen some interiors that look very disturbing with their contrasting style. I saw a white and red living room. Everything was just sticking out. The sofa was white, the rug was red, the throw pillow was red. Everything was just looking plain. It was looking like a Valentine setting. Designing your living room like this with these colors sticking out can look very basic. Red and white can be so beautiful when done right. So add accent contrasting colors without overdoing it. Incorporate patterns and textures to make the contrast easy on the eye. So I'll rather you do this instead of this. The next thing I always see is buying disproportional furniture. You can't measure a space with your eyes, or rather, you can't accurately measure a space with your eyes. Interior design is all about details and accuracy. Sometimes people just look at the space and be like, oh yeah, this would fit, oh this sofa would fit, oh that's the size of the curtain. You can never tell by just looking at it. Even if you have planned out your space, measure it. If you can't do it yourself, get someone else to do it for you. Because you might regret buying that beautiful piece of furniture or curtain. That's why whenever someone orders for a bespoke sofa, I always ensure someone goes there to measure the entrance of the apartment and the available space in the living room so that we won't have an issue of, oh, it was too big, oh, it's too small. It's just gonna fit perfectly. Think of it as wearing an outfit that is two sizes too big or two sizes too small. No matter how beautiful the outfit is, it will never fit on your body. Proportion is very essential in designing. A beautiful piece can be very disturbing if it's not the accurate size or perfect fit for that space. I have to resound this third one because it's disturbing. Using the wrong size of center rug. An area rug is so essential. In fact, if you have an area rug, take it out for a bit and see if there's going to be any difference. Of course there's going to be a difference. A huge difference at that because these little things make your living room cohesive. It's great if you have a center rug or an area rug, but is that rug a perfect fit for the size of your living room? I've seen some people center rugs that looked really silly and funny, like it shouldn't happen there. One time I had an in-person consultation for a living room makeover. The pictures are still fresh in my head. They had four living rooms and most of them had no center rug. One had a center rug, but it was absolutely silly. It was a huge living room with a very tiny rug. And then the rug had the small center table with the um, small stools underneath like legs. So it was just a very funny sight. There's no exact size of a center rug or a specification that your living room requires. But the right thing is to have a rug big enough for all the legs of your sofa to be on it or a couple of legs to be on it. I'd rather you don't have a center rug than to have a tiny thing in the middle, but you should have a center rug, a big one.
This point may be a little bit controversial, but stop placing your furniture against the wall. We can make an argument for smaller apartments that are trying to maximize their space. But hey, if you have a big apartment, why would you want to place your furniture against the wall? Just imagine having to push your accent chairs to the wall, putting the big sofa to the wall, just pushing everything to the wall. I mean, what's the entire space in the middle for? When everything in the living room is so distant from each other, the space will not look appealing and it will not be cohesive at all. You don't have to use a complete sofa set. I mean, who says you have to use a seven-seater sofa set? I see some very tiny living rooms with a full sofa set trying to fit in. And this is a big no-no. Some living rooms just need a big couch and maybe two singles. Some others just need one single couch. It depends on how big your living room is. You need to know what you need. That's why you need to design your home according to what you need. You need to curate it to suit your personality. You could say that's what's available in stores, but how about you get a bespoke sofa design? If you have a small space, get a sofa that will fit in comfortably and still have enough space for movement and foot traffic. By the way, Unicorn Interior has amazing craftsmen who make handmade and bespoke sofa at affordable prices. Inadequate lighting. Never depend on one source of light. I've been to some homes where they have just a single source of lights, probably in the middle, and then maybe with two wall sconces. Illumination is so important in interior design. In fact, there's almost no design without lighting. Lighting enhances and accentuates certain decorative elements. Think of how a spotlight lit from above a wall frame or an art piece. It gives this funnel accent look that beautifies the space. Wall sconces are also decorative. That's why you must find a way to include multiple light sources into your living room decoration. No one, absolutely nobody wants to be in a boring dark space. Have a mixture of general light, warm light, and white bright light. They all create a different kind of ambience. LED light, table lamps, wall sconces, floor lamps, spotlights, ETC. But the ultimate remains the natural light, and this works perfectly during the day if you have large windows for the light to come through. Matchy matchy furniture. I usually don't like to go to the store or showroom to pick up furniture sets. Most times they don't show off your taste or personality. It's always like an extension of the showroom into your living room. When the coffee table, console table, sofa and dining table all look matchy matchy, it will just look like a cut out from a magazine. Sometimes this matchy matchy furniture even extends to the bedroom. I'm not saying your living room should be rioters, but it should have some style and personality that differentiates everything. The different items can be bought from different designers and different stores, but it should have something that ties them all together. That's why I like to take my time to design my space so that I can pick the materials and companies that are more like me. But if I'm designing a client's piece and I don't have the luxury of time, I just go bespoke, selecting custom items, fabric, materials, color, and whatnot. And finally, not having enough surface. By surface, I mean coffee tables and side tables. Remember that coffee tables and side tables are part of the living room essentials and living room must-haves. 
Designing and setting up your living room without those will make your living room incomplete. Just like area rugs, you must be mindful of the size of coffee table you use in your living room. I have a blog post. I wrote about six things you need to consider before selecting a coffee table. I'll drop the link right in the description box. You should check that out. So you need ample surface to set things on in your living room, like dropping drinks or sometimes food, or even some decorative items in the living room. There are so many other living room layouts and interior design mistakes. But I won't want to bore you with the long list. That's why I'm sharing these few decorative tips with you. I know there's so much more, so I want you to share any design mistake you have come across in the comment section. Looking forward to reading your comments below. I know you like this video, so give a thumb up, share, and subscribe. You don't want to miss out on any amazing content from this channel. Until the next video, thank you guys for constantly watching. Bye.